Hey, hello YouTube. Welcome to part 9 and in today's video, as promised, we're going to play around with some of the things we have created in our framework in the past. And one other thing that we're going to do, we're going to create logs for our ADB class because we now we have a log class that we implemented in previous video. So we're going to use that to kind of create a little platform uh, for our ADB debugging. And then another thing we're going to do, let me just show you. We have a speed test app here. So we're going to write a script that will open our speed test app. It's going to click test again. It's going to wait for the test to finish. And then it's going to tell us what our ping, our download, and our upload is. So let's go ahead and start with logs first. We're going to go to ADB class over here. And we see that we have a bunch of methods, all of these methods over here. So if you want to implement logs for every single method here, we have to go into every single method and say something like my logger log debug and then say deleting file, blah, blah, blah. Okay, but that's pretty tedious. I don't want to go into every single method and do that. So what I see is that every single method is referencing a command method. So instead, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go into my command method and I'm going to say my logger log debug. And then the first <clears throat> debug line that I want to log is the actual command that was passed in to this method. So I'm going to say formatting adb command and then the original command and then after that I want to know what the value of the command was once it was formatted so then I'm going to change my line here to say formatted so it's done formatting it and it reassign the value over here so now I'm going to output that value once that's done, the next thing I want to know is what the output of that command was. So output of the ADB command, and I'm going to change command to output. So how can we use this logs? Well, when we output this formatting ADB command and formatted ADB command, this will give us a clue which command, uh, which method was using this uh, command method. So if I see adb kill server in formatting adb command, then I know that this method was used. Okay, so now let's go ahead and go to our runner and actually create a script for, uh, for a speed test. So in our runner, I have already made some code here, pre-made. And if you've seen this sort of code for the first time, then you haven't watched my uh, Appium uh, Basics video. And I recommend you guys to click the link that's on the screen right now to go and watch the Hello World uh, for Appium. And come back to this video because <clears throat> otherwise you, you shouldn't really be watching this video if you have no idea what this code is doing. Um, so let's take a look at what we have to do. The very first thing we need to do is we need to create ADB instance. Okay, so we're going to call our ADB and it'll import it. We're going to say ADB equals new ADB. And then we need to make sure we tell which uh, device we need to create this ADB instance for. And this is going to be this device. So I'm going to copy this, I'm going to paste it in here, and then I'm going to use my ADB instance that I just created to open an activity. And I happen to know that the activity I need is, <clears throat> uh, the package of the activity is this, and the activity ID is this. If you're not sure how I got this, uh, click the link that's on the screen right now and go watch my ADB tutorial because I explain uh, which command to run in order to get these values. Uh, so what we're going to do here, we're just going to copy 
the activity ID and then we're going to copy of uh, package ID I'm sorry and then we're going to copy activity ID we're going to open our speed test and then once we open the speed test we need to make sure we can interact with some of the objects we have on the screen so let's go ahead and create some objects that we need and let's say UI object test again button equals new UI selector right because we use now UI selector to tell which selector we're going to be using and then once we are satisfied with the selectors that we are going to be using we're going to use make UI object method to create our object and I chose to use resource ID I think uh, we do have resource ID available for us there so uh, I'm just going to leave it blank for now and I'm going to create three more UI objects and this is going to be for our ping for our download and for our upload and now let's go let's go into our terminal and start our UI automator viewer and we're going to check which elements or which selectors we have and we chose to use resource ID so let's see if we have resource IDs available to us and just make this a little bit bigger and let's see so we have resource ID available for ping let's just copy this go over here and paste it in go back find one for download paste it in find one for upload paste it in and then we need one more for this test again button okay copy and paste it as well so now that we have our objects we can do certain actions on them and the first thing, once we opened um, the app, we need to do is we need to wait for this test again button. So I'm going to call test again button. I'm going to say wait to appear, and I'm going to give it five seconds tops. Uh, so it's not going to if if the button fails to appear within five seconds, then we will throw an exception. If it appears within one second, then we will move on. It's not going to wait the full five seconds if button appears faster. So then the next thing we're going to do, once the button appeared, we are going to tap on it. And then we are going to wait for the button to disappear, right? Because what happens here, once we tap on test again, this button disappears and we know the test has started. And the test will, um, until the button appears again, we know the test is in progress. So over here, I'm going to give it five seconds to wait for the button to disappear and then I'm gonna say wait to appear again for like 120 seconds I think is fine uh, once that's done we are going to use my logger again to output some info for us <clears throat> so the info we're gonna output is ping equals ping get text and then we're gonna do the same thing for our download and for our upload download and upload okay so we can't actually run this script yet because remember that our UI object Class. If you go to our UI object class, we are referencing Android driver in all of these methods. And if you go to Android driver over here, it's not assigned anywhere yet. And basically, we will assign Android driver with our driver manager, but our driver manager is not yet implemented. So instead, what we're going to do for the purpose of this video, we're going to go back to our runner main method, and we're going to manually assign Android driver 
and we're going to assign the driver that we have created over here to our Android driver so it's not null. Okay, good. So now we can run our script, but there's one more thing we need to do. We need to make sure that we enabled logging. Otherwise, we're not going to see anything. So the very first line in our code, what we're going to do is we're going to say my logger log. We're going to set level for the log, and then we're going to choose the level. And we're going to go with the debug level for now. And I'm actually going to run this code twice with debug level and without the debug level. Just to kind of show you the difference. And just one second, let me disable something on my phone here before I do anything else. Okay, one second. Sorry about the wait. Just had to disable VPN because uh, it was causing some issues. Okay, so let's just wait for this thing to finish. And while we wait for it to finish, let's go ahead and go to a terminal and start our Appium server. Okay, our Appium server is up. Go back to our script. Okay. So now let's try to run this and see what happens. It's okay, ignore that. Let's go ahead and exit to desktop. Okay, so we're waiting for the test to finish now. Okay, so let's take a look at what we have in our logs over here. We only ran one command with ADB, so that's why we have some output from our command, right? So we see our logs came from core ADB class and the method that was used was command. And the command that was used was shell am start and the activity. Then we also formatted this command to include the path to our uh, to the home location of the ADB, and then we actually ran that command, and this is the uh, the output that we got in the terminal. We haven't actually done anything with this output, but it's there if you need to um, uh, to analyze it. And the next thing we we have here is actually our sysout print from our UI object class that we created some time ago. Uh, you could actually replace this uh, with something like my logger log debug, and you could say new or created uh, new UI object and then pass in the locator. Then we'll have the same format with the timestamp and the class and the method where it came from and the level that was used. So, and then once that was done, once the test finished, we actually see that uh, in our runner main method, we had this output, right? So. 13ms, let's actually check whether or not that was correct. 
So we have 13 MS, 6692 megabytes per second, and 13.03 megabytes per second upload. So download, upload, and respective values here. So everything good, right? So let's run the same code, but this time let's <clears throat> disable debug and let's only leave info in here and see what happens. So I'm going to start the script once more. Now expected is that we see only this three lines of output. Okay, seems like it's working, so let me just move that out of the way. Uh, so you can see that we can enable different uh, debug levels, and it's very useful if you want to just know the critical um, information in our logs, we can just do it through, uh, through the info level. If you want to know everything that's happening uh, under the hood, then we want to enable our debug level as well. And right now we only implemented um, our debug logs in ADB class, but you guys feel free to go into UI object and create um, debug outputs over here. It's kind of personal preference how you want to do it, so think about it. You don't want to have logs um, all over the place. It should tell you some meaningful information, so it's easy to debug. That's the purpose of the logs. So make sure you use it responsibly uh, so it's easy to debug. And I appreciate you guys for watching this video. Make sure to like it, subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, guys.